Hello, welcome. I hope you're doing well. So today, today I bring you a book haul and the reason I'm sitting on the floor in the living room is because there's quite a pile of books um, and it's just easier to be on the floor with the books rather than having to like stretch around and move around and all that stuff. So for simplicity's sake, we're on the floor. Let me just... There's quite a few. These are then the books that I've acquired since the last book haul. So through Black November, over the Christmas period, and I've gotten a few of them myself as well. Before we get into the books, just a few housekeeping things. First, clearly I'm not succeeding in sticking to the schedule that I wanted to have for myself. I intended on putting up videos every Thursday and then not be too strict on myself if I was delayed by a day maybe, but it hasn't been working out for me. So I'm just gonna say bye to the schedule for now and I'm just gonna kind of wing it. <laughs> but I will make sure that there's a new video every week. So I just don't know what day, but I'm gonna try and stick to Thursdays, see if I can make it work. I don't know, this is kind of trial and error. So I'm just gonna take it as I go. Second thing, you'll have noticed I didn't make a January wrap up. I will be making a wrap up in the end of February and it will encompass all the books I read in January and February. The only plan when it comes to wrap ups is to make sure that I do them either on a, on a monthly basis or on a bi-monthly basis. It'll depend I think on how many books I read a month because I feel like there needs to be enough for it to warrant its own video. So I think a bi-monthly alternative to a monthly one is a good option. And then final piece of news, I have a bookstagram account now. So an account on Instagram specifically for this channel. The handle is the same there as it is for this channel. So it's Josie Talks About Books. Um, I'll leave a link in the description and put it on the screen for those of you who are interested. I am a bit of a noob though. I haven't really used social media much at all for years at this point. The last time I was actively using Instagram was in 2017. And there have been a lot of updates since then, so like I don't know how to make reels and it took me like an hour the other day when I was setting up the account, it took me like an hour to figure out how to change the covers on the little like story highlight things on like Instagram accounts. It took me an hour, <laughs> so please bear with me while I figure out how to do Instagram. It's probably gonna be a little painful watching me struggle through it, but I'll catch on eventually. I tend to pick up things relatively quickly, so it shouldn't be too newbie for too long. I think I'll mostly use it to update what I'm reading as I'm reading it and then general opinion once I finish a book and then some other bookish stuff maybe you can head on over to Instagram. That's basically what it's there for. But there will be nothing on the Instagram account that won't also be here. So if you don't want to go on Instagram, if you aren't interested in that, then don't worry, there will be nothing there that won't also be here. The only difference will be in Instagram, I can update in real time as I'm reading and then I'll do more in-depth wrap-ups here on the YouTube channel, so you won't miss anything. One warning though, um, because I'm such a noob to using social media this way, I am not in the habit of using it, so it's going to be a little bit of work for me to get into the habit of regularly using this app and then staying consistent, so bear with me. Just bear with me while I figure out how to use it and also try to work it into a kind of habit. So bye to the schedule, wrap up coming in February, and bookstagram account. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get into the books. Okay, this first one you already know that I have, I've already read it. One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. This is the English translation and I read this for a reading vlog that I did earlier in January. I'll link it, you can check it out for more of my thoughts on this book. In summary, I'm glad I read it. It was a, it was kind of my introduction to this particular aspect of Soviet history. The Gulag, the work camps, I don't know all that much about them, so this was kind of um, my introduction to it. And it was a difficult read, a brutal read, but educational. And it is so well written, so I'm glad that I read it. I will be reading more from Solzhenitsyn, but I need a break because, as I said, it's pretty heavy stuff. So even though it's really short, it's not the kind of... I don't think this author's work is the kind of work you binge read, but it was... It's a, it's a very well done book. This second one I've also recently read. This is Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. The lighting is not great. 
So I knew nothing about this author or any of her work until it started popping up in people's favorites videos over the past few months. It seemed like people couldn't sing her praises enough so I got really curious and then I found out that not only is this book getting an adaption that's coming soon but Cillian Murphy is going to play the lead role so I just I I had to pick it up I had to pick it up because I really want to see the movie when it comes and in order to do that I have to read the book because that is the kind of person I am when it arrived I didn't realize how short it was going to be so I just sat down and kind of just read it in one go it reads really fast and you'll be hearing more about my thoughts on this book in the upcoming wrap-up at the end of this month but suffice to say for now I get it. I get the hype. And I think it deserves it. We move on to all of the books that I have not yet read. The first one here is The Tao of Pooh, The Principles of Taoism as Demonstrated by Winnie the Pooh by Benjamin Hoff. I won't pretend to know all that much about Taoism. I don't. I know the very, very basics. But I love Winnie the Pooh. And I also know that people seem to really enjoy this. So I kind of just was really curious about it. More than anything, I want to know how the author ties Winnie the Pooh and Taoism together. I am pretty intrigued. That's a really interesting concept. I'm just really looking forward to hopefully learning something, but also just enjoying falling back into the world of Winnie the Pooh. I'm really just hoping that this will be a good a good read. It's not particularly long either, so. One of these books that I can get to in a few hours and I'm looking forward to it. Next we have a really fun one. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This book has been everywhere everywhere and everyone loves it. I've seen a ton of booktubers really enjoying this, just a bunch of readers in general enjoying it. It's been mentioned in my comments several times and so I, I, had, to, I had to have it. I, I needed it. I needed it. The best part about this is obviously it's a book about fairies so I knew that there was a fantastical element to it but as I flipped through it, it turns out it's set in the early 1900s so it's historical fiction as well which if you know me fantasy and historical fiction tie them together and it's a book made for me. It just it is. It is. Another really fun thing that I discovered when I was flipping through it was that this was written as a journal, right? So it gives you the date and then also place. The way that this place is pronounced, it could be a place in Norway, but the way it's written kind of gives Iceland, which is really really cool. And it reads Ramsvik Ljusam. This could be in Norway. If it were spelled differently, it could be a place in Norway. So that's really fun. I know that the sequel just came out. There's a paperback version of it too, but it's like one of those really, really big ones, which is so weird. So I'm going to wait until it comes out in like the normal paperback size so that they match. If I enjoy this, then that's going to be a priority for sure. I have a feeling I'll like it. I really hope I will. I'm so excited to read this. You don't even know. Next is the first of a few Norwegian books. This one is nonfiction. It's by Old Karsten Tveit and it's called Mythosen på 200 sider, which translates to the Middle East in 200 pages. The Middle East is not a region that we learn all that much about um, in like school and stuff. Our own regions are usually the, the focus, but the Middle East is a region that consistently, regularly draws at least the West's attention. And so I think this is by no means some sort of comprehensive textbook. I think um, it's mostly meant to be a kind of digestible history lesson for people that don't know all that much or don't know where to start when it comes to trying to learn. The intention of this kind of book is mostly to be a sort of kind of navigation tool to, to kind of help guide the reader towards important dates, places, events, names, people, and then allow the reader to go and research and investigate more on their own once they know where to kind of start. That's what I'm assuming this is, that's the impression I have, and that's what I'll go into this expecting. It seems to have gotten pretty good reviews, and I'm interested in knowing what this particular author, who is a journalist and has covered the Middle East for Norwegian media for about 40, like, like 40 years, um, I wonder what he has chosen to include as significant because 200 years is a very long time. It's a very long time where a lot 
can happen. So yeah, I'm not expecting a lot of depth. I'm expecting highlighted uh, events, people, dates, places, names of importance, basically. And then kind of being informed to some degree of, of what I should be looking into. What it is that's the most relevant to understanding the region as it is today. That kind of thing. Might be a really interesting book and I'm interested in seeing what I think once I finish it. Now we have a modern classic, another one. This is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Obviously, I know very well that this is a, a book that a lot of people have considered an incredibly important book. It's a book that a lot of people have labeled a book they hope and want everyone to read. It is a modern classic and I've never read anything by Margaret Atwood. I've never read this. I haven't seen the adaption and I think it's about time. I want to be I want to be in the in. I want to be in the know. I want to know I want to know what it's all about. I am aware that I should not be going into this expecting a lighthearted fun read. This is a dystopian novel, isn't it? It's it's going to be dark and heavy and I'm nervous but I'm also really looking forward to finally getting to this classic because I think it's about time. I don't really know what to expect other than I'm sure that it's going to become one of these books that I'll think a lot about. Kind of like One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, it'll be a book that you reflect a lot on. But we'll see. We'll see what I think once I get to it. I'm at least certain that it'll leave an impression. I had to I had to move because the sun was getting in my face. But we move on to more nonfiction. Becoming by Michelle Obama. I'm not particularly invested in the Obamas, but it was always nice to hear her speak. She's a very good speaker. There's something about her that kind of just draws you in. She seems incredibly likable and quite charismatic. I was intrigued when she first published this. And back in November, I was in a bookstore and I saw this on the shelf and I picked it up and I started flipping through it and I went to the first page and I started reading. And before I knew it, I was three pages in because the writing is, it draws you in immediately. And I don't know if Michelle Obama wrote this herself or if she has a ghostwriter, but whoever it is that held that pen did an excellent job. An excellent job. I already know. Don't really know what I'm expecting. Um, I guess the story of how she was shaped into the woman she is now. And, you know, hearing people share their stories in their own voices, and especially when they're written this well, will always be interesting. So I'm looking forward to reading this one, hoping I really enjoy my time with it. Becoming Norwegian nonfiction this time. This is Hjerte i to, Sex Monter med Karpe by Johan Shanmugaratnam. The title translates to Hard into six months with Karpe. For those of you who don't know, Karpe is a music duo consisting of artists Magdi and Shirag, and they've been making music together since they were like teenagers. I think it was either the very late 90s or the early 2000s when they first started making music and releasing it. They have some incredibly iconic hits that every Norwegian will know. I grew up with a lot of their music. A lot of their songs are part of the soundtrack of my life, of me growing up. They are wildly popular here. They are one of our biggest artists. Everyone knows them. They have so many fans. They're huge. I think they released this in 2022 and I did not know about it until last year and I got this for Christmas and I'm very very excited to read it. As I understand it, it's basically the author having tagged along with Karpe for six months where they had events, concerts, and they've also had conversations with the author as a big fan of Karpe. I'm really looking forward to seeing how those six months um, played out. These dudes are just really cool people too, like they're really good people in general, just they're excellent artists but they're also really good humans. I don't know, I just I'm glad I have this book. More historical fiction now this book. I am Woman on Fire by Lisa Barr. I've had my eyes on this book since it came out. I think it came out in 2022 and I've just been eyeing it ever since. The cover is what initially caught my eye. I don't know what happened when they printed this particular copy, but the title is like almost off the page. I don't know that it's not supposed to look like this. It's it really bothers me that it's not centered like this is I, I don't know what happened to this poor copy but you it's it most of the cover is there it really drew me in i really loved this cover i thought it was so pretty and then i read the back and i knew i needed it i put it on my priority tbr and i finally got it i can't remember all that much about what this was about but the very general gist is that this this journalist is hired to track down a painting called Woman on Fire that the Nazis stole in during World War II and is now missing. Except 
she's not the only one trying to track down this painting and so it becomes a race against time of who will find it first. I don't know if you can see on the cover there's a little blurb and it says thick with history, scandal, romance, and deceit. Sounds pretty pretty darn cool to me. I am buzzing to finally have this book. I'm really excited to read it. I, I really really hope that I love it. This is one of the books highest on the priority list of this pile for me because I've been wanting to read it since it came out and finally having it and just not reading it just does not feel right. So this one is high on the priority list for sure. Staying on topic with World War II and historical fiction, this is Norwegian. It's called Dovris Utvalte. It's by Morten Brusletto. This is basically, as I understand it, a novel that imagines a Norway in a world where the Axis powers won World War II. And we follow our main character who's born in the 70s and it follows him throughout his life as he grows up in this alternate reality until he, I think, starts questioning the regime. I know there are a few books out that kind of follow this theme of reimagining a world where the Axis powers won the war, but I've never seen one that focuses on Norway. So this could be kind of interesting. And as one of my goals this year is to read more Norwegian literature, I think this is a good addition to that. We'll see, we'll see what I think about this once I get to it. The last book that I have here physically, The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. I'm not some hardcore Britney Spears fan, but she is a pop culture icon. She's a staple figure in mine and many other people's childhoods. Everyone is familiar with Britney Spears. Everyone associates Britney Spears with a certain like period of 2000s music that is so nostalgic at this point. There are still plenty of her songs that I really really enjoy and so when I saw she was writing a book all those things just kind of flooded me and I knew that I was going to read this book. I knew that. Of course I'm going to read this book. I'm sure we all are aware that she's gone through a lot of things. I read somewhere that that it's it, she's like the kind of example of an artist that the media builds up only to want to tear down and that's just one of many things that she's gone through at this point and I'm very interested in finding out what parts of her story she wants to share and how she wants to share those things, how she reflects on those things, all that kind of stuff. Hearing about the things that she's gone through, the things that she's experienced from her perspective is, I think, the best way to hear about these things. I feel like I'll have a lot to say about this book when I've read it and I'm really looking forward to doing that. So this is also a book that I won't be waiting too long with finally getting to. All right, there are two more books that are in the post somewhere, kind of lost, but supposedly making their way to me. <laughs> we'll see when they arrive. The first is Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. Cloud Cuckoo Land, Cloud Cuckoo Land. The spelling makes me think it's supposed to be pronounced cuckoo, but if it's cuckoo, someone please let me know in the comments. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. For those of you that don't know, I read All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr in November, and I loved it. It was amazing, it was written so well, the characters were fantastic. I had nothing but good things to say about that book and I knew I needed to read more by this author. I was kind of already eyeing Cloud Cuckoo Land. Uh, a few of you have mentioned the book to me in the comments as well and so I've, I've caved. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to, I had to, I had to get it. So it's making its way towards me and I'm really really excited about reading it. I don't know all that much about it. Um, I think we're following four different people. I don't know if they're in different timelines. I think there's four. I, I really don't know all that much but I don't want to know anymore. I just kind of want to go into a blind. I'm considering making a reading vlog for it since I made one for all the light we cannot see. I'm thinking on it. All I know is that I cannot wait for it to land in my mailbox. If I do end up really enjoying that book then I think I'm probably going to label and Anthony Doerr as one of my all-time favorite authors and I will be devouring the rest of his catalog. And the final book that I have coming to me in the mail is The Pale Horse by Agatha Christie. I try to read an Agatha Christie book every year, at least one, preferably more. The thing about Agatha Christie's books is that I'm already so familiar with all of the stories because I've watched all of the movies several times and so very little in these books come as surprises to me. That being said, I believe The Pale Horse is one of the books where they changed some things for the adaption. I think The Pale Horse is one of those and I kind of like that and also don't like that because I loved the movie of The Pale Horse so much so I kind of just want to read 
that story. But at the same time, if the book is different, then I might not know what's coming, which is exciting. So still don't know how I feel about that. We'll, we'll see. It depends on how much I like the book, I guess. But I'm really, really excited to read that book. I mean, I'm excited to read all of these books, right? That's why they're here. So yeah, those two books, Cloud Cuckoo Land and The Pale Horse, are making their way to me and hopefully they'll end in my mailbox in not too long and I can get to reading them really soon. But that's it. Those are all the books that I've acquired since the last time I made one of these videos. Again, super excited about every single one of these. I cannot wait to get to them. I really hope that I'll have read all of them by the end of the year. As always, if you have thoughts or opinions on any of the books that I've mentioned, then feel free to share those in the comments. I always enjoy hearing about whether you've liked or maybe not loved the books that I mention and bring up on this channel. There's quite a variety here, quite a uh, mix of genres, and I mean there's fiction, there's non-fiction, there's Norwegian, there's English, there's even the translated work in here, there are some modern classics in here, historical fiction, fantasy, even dystopia. So quite a mix of things going on here. But that's all from me this time around. I hope you have a really, really good day. I hope the book you're reading is a really good one, and I will see you next time. Bye!